Alrighty, guys, welcome back. There's a fire. It's not good. I'm gonna go in after the boy myself. I the supply wagon doesn't make it, but we already established that's probably fine. Yeah. Um, Varl don't like fire, which is why I didn't order them in. And if you do that, it makes them sad or whatever. And I think this was cleverly pa paced too, because at this point we might have already forgotten that Varl hate fire. That's actually a good point. Um, I we've feel been like away I've... from a Varl party for. Yeah, I feel like I fell prey to that. Uh, mm -hmm. At least once or twice. You forget the Varl don't like fire. It's like the first thing they talk about. I know, man. Which is what leads me to think that maybe the Varl aren't like natural creatures. You know, maybe they're they're hewed from stone, just as the Dredge are. Just like over time, they Ooh. develop a flesh patina. I, it could be something like that. I, I mean, it's really, same... really like this Godstone because it's like this area used to be underwater because that's why there's a water Godstone here, but yep. now it's not. It's hard to imagine the Nordfelling waste being filled with water, but the Godstone stands as a reminder of the vast lake it used to look across. A lake shark? <laughs> Perhaps they'll bring us luck. Leave now before it gets out of hand. Those oh, absolutely. bad, right? If you spend all day looking for them, you, like, something bad happens. Because yeah. they're pointless. They're, they're, like, it's like gathering... I think what happens... So I think the way to get the equipment out of that is to let them take their time and to not keep searching and to just rest and when you wake up you find the equipment gotcha so you it still costs you a day there she oh is. yeah that Her. is that is the the archer you get we don't want to see a battlefield full of dead wives and daughters train even more train even more <laughs> <laughs> you're just clansmen so fuck you, no, you they don't turned know them into fighters that's so much more useful and look at that our morale isn't poor anymore it's weak look at that some giant hall, but it's empty, sleeping beneath a roof. Uh, it was abandoned for a reason. Let's leave it. Yes. Waste no time. Keep you on moving. If you get, if you, if you let your bones warm up too much, you won't get used to the cold anymore. Exactly. You'll lose your immunity. And right? we're all immune, right? Which is why we're dying at the rate that we are. Yeah, well, those are all the weak people. How are we only losing eight clansmen a day when we haven't had food in better than a month? That's what I Well, those know. eight can feed everyone for about a day. Oof. <laughs> That's uncomfortable. Uh, 130, we have more than that. Just go ahead and charge in. Let's rush into battle. Here we go. All right. I'm not going to continue the fight if we're in bad shape. I learned my lesson from last time. Oh, Faisal. Right. So this is the point where we meet up. And it gives you Faisal as the like the cue because he's in the other party, but you can put him with this one because like he's surrounded or whatever in this one, and he like needs oh, your help. Oh, that's right. Okay, yeah. so that's why we're entering the battle to begin with. Yeah, because yeah. we're trying to help out some some lone Varl fighting off a wave of dredge. Oh, balls! This isn't gonna go well. Okay, I don't want oh yeah Hoger and Moger anywhere near those guys, so I have to send them sprinting up that way as quick as possible. Yeah, I would send them toward the slingers. Yeah, I'm gonna put them up like that, and then... Okay, Rook can't deal on his own. Okay, but Ivor and Faisal can take out that guy. These two can take out that, and those three can take them. Okay. Sort of leaves your right. right corner a little undefended, but I think that's okay. Yeah, they're they're slow, so it's gonna take them a while to e catch up. Exactly. To um, and I am just gonna go ahead and, again, <laughs> break this guy's arm. So, I, I was thinking about this. I yeah. feel like some of the abilities that, especially the Varl have, yeah. like, I mean, basically like that one, right? I think it would be more useful if it got better as you increased your armor break ability. I agree. But it doesn't. Yeah, it, and it doesn't. It, it's a little sad, too, because I think that n not having those abilities, like, really ramp up with the rest of the game, I mean, they, they increase in, in potency as you um, rank up the character, right? It just yeah. is a passive thing that happens. But I, I feel like that's not enough. For most of them, anyway. I agree. Um, there's, a, there's a lot of, like, missed opportunity with the tactical fighting aspect of it, but I think that's okay um, as the story, like, doesn't sacrifice anything for the game that's true. being occasionally less deep than it could be. Yeah, that's fair. And it's only occasionally, too. There's only, like, a few things that I would, like, desperately want to see out of the tactics in this game in the future. And, and I think they've at least set it up to where they can actually start getting a little bit more complex with the, yeah. the, the second game, right? Better because variety, they've established abilities, the, the base. Yeah. races, things like that. And that's all going to come, so... <laughs> one, one thing I'm really, really curious to see in the next game is... So, basically, in, in, this, ver in this game, we have two sizes of opponents. We have the one square or four square. Yeah. 
units. I wonder with the centaurs if we're gonna have like a two by three. I think it's probably just gonna be a, a two by one. Oh, two by three. Yeah, that would make sense. Two because by three? You mean like two I, I guess wide it, and three long? Yeah. They're not dredge sized. They're human sized. Okay. I, I, that makes sense. So it probably would be two by one. Two by one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I wonder if they avoided it in this game because then you have rotation to worry about, and that's yeah. often a pain in tactical games. Rotation, but a one by two requires less <laughs> rotation. Either that, or you just fudge it and do like a fourth ed D and D thing where it's like, pi is four. You know, you, you've you've seen that, right? Mm, I think I get what you're saying. Yeah, where instead of having like circular motion be like require an additional move, you just oh, yeah. cut off the corner and call it a day. And and since getting attacked from the sides or, or from behind doesn't actually have any mechanical difference in this game, I think that's okay. Yeah. Suck it! Got him. <laughs> so, my question to you is, do you think that they, in the level design of, of a lot of these, like, battlefields, mm -hmm. do you think they utilize the varying, um, like, sizes of the units well? No. Uh, I think there are a few games, uh, a few matches where they do it perfectly and mm -hmm. it's absolutely on point um, but I think there are a few where they don't do it very well at all um, I, yeah I think they rely on the very open battlefield a, a lot right yeah. um, and I think it still comes into play a little bit when it comes to the enemy placement on the field devastating. they really are um, which is why you can't do them too often yeah 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 I feel like a lot of the actual like Starting formations tend to kind of become the same thing after a while because mm -hmm. it just it just devolves into how soon you can get to the enemy and mm -hmm. how soon you can initiate the crash. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and forge ahead on this guy and just have him take his turn now. <laughs> oh! <laughs> I like the way that looked. That was neat. It took a little bit too long, but it was neat anyway. Yeah, I actually wonder why there was that little bit of a. I'm just here break this guy. <laughs> that actually worked out really well. Yeah. I, I feel like I don't use Krummer's ability a lot, but I think you use... If, strangely for once, you use the ability better it's, than I would have. It's one of the few abilities in the game that I'll actually use, and the only time I'll use it is when it's better than doing whatever that character would do. And the thing is, Krummer is kind of a weak character when he gets injured like this, so just have him have uh, uh, an uninjured friendly take their turn. It's much better. See, I feel like for me, I, I generally weigh it against action efficiency, right? So, like, you're basically sacrificing it in action and taking it an additional hit mm -hmm. just so that one character that was going to eventually act anyway is going to act But sooner. the thing is, Rook had just acted, so by pushing his initiative up like that, I yeah. skip a whole wave of enemies that would have otherwise got to go. I, I think for characters like Rook, it becomes very sure, useful because yeah. he's immensely powerful. Oh, yeah. Um, but say, like, if you were to do that for a Hacken, or not Hacken, um, for, a, like, Hogan or, or Mogan. It's not worth it, then. I exactly, yeah. yeah. Which is why I don't do it for them. <laughs> right, right, exactly. <laughs> okay, now for Ivor to catch up. Which is fine. <laughs> How did he end up... Oh, there was a guy over yeah, there. Yeah, there was one guy that he and Faisal teamed up on, and then uh, his friend just, like, abandoned him to the wolves, which I think is fine. Um, I am going to go ahead and... Uh... uh I guess I'll just armor break. Yeah, unfortunately. That's okay. You know, I feel like that is one thing that Banner Saga does relatively well as far as, like, the battlefield setup goes, is I feel like it's very rare that I have a character that's just way off on their own yeah. trying to catch up to the party. Yeah. And whenever it does happen, I feel like it's only one character, maybe occasionally two characters that are off on their own. Yeah. Um, which is good. I, I feel I've worked on enough tactical games at this point to, like recognize when it's being a problem it, yeah, it's, it's really it's actually really challenging to design around that oh man that guy is way too much health yeah Faisal's gonna get like just nailed Wrecked. in a second um, which is fine I am not concerned about it he's here to take some hits for characters that otherwise might he's be a little fodder. yeah exactly he's really really big cannon fodder <laughs> although he still has pretty decent armor at least yeah, uh, well, he hasn't. He still hasn't taken any hits, um, which is uh, important if you're gonna try this out. Uh, can I get a second? I can, which means I can nice. kill him. Here we go. 
and killing those slingers is deceptively important. If the, if you allow the slingers to just sit there and wear down all of your armor and plunk off your characters, then their greater action economy will overwhelm you eventually. Oh, absolutely. And that's that's not okay. I would just kill that guy. I actually want to move back to a place where uh, I'm farthest away from this guy so that there's a chance he goes for Ogre instead of going for hmm, Rook. That's ah, fair. shit. That's the guy he summoned just now. Which Another... I was trying to prevent, but I was going to be one damage off. Mm. Another what now? Another interface question for you. Sure. So, they don't show you the range characters, um, <sighs> like, the, their range, right? Yeah. Um, while you're moving them. Right. It only shows you their, their range when you're actually in the attack menu. Uh -huh. Do you think they should show you their, their range no. while you're moving? No. Why not? Because um, the... Uh... There's got to be some limitation on the information that you're given, and showing a constantly moving grid like that is, like, first of all, it's space wasteful. Just like from a from a visual design perspective, you're wasting a lot of the space that you have available on screen, and to show this beautiful terrain, just so you can show a ranged character's mm. range, it, it just, it seems like a waste. It, it does feel a little overwhelming if, if that were to happen. Yeah, exactly. It's too much information too often. Precisely. Um, but I, when it I comes agree. down to it, uh, you figure you put your range characters within four or five spaces. Most of the time, it's not going to require that level of precision. I say most of the time because there's some times that it will. Yeah. Well, especially, too, once you get a feel for what their range is, it actually isn't too hard to remember it. Um, but yeah, I, I think overall it makes the game feel the game UI, I should say, feel a little bit more polished. Yeah. Um, I wish I had one more, but I don't. So I can't Help. really do anything. Uh, he's going to be left at, at one if I shoot him, so instead I'm just going to weaken this guy further. I think that's a better option anyway, because yeah. that guy is just going to wreck everybody. Yeah, and I'm going to put this guy into a position where Rook can kill him next time. Um, I am losing people rapidly. Uh, this is this is sort of turning around for him. Um, sort of expected, though. I mean, yeah. this, this battle is supposed to be hard, but that's also the benefit of joining up with the other team. There was going to be a turn anyway. It might as well happen now. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to continue to advance and just kill this guy. <laughs> just like casually mowing dudes down. <laughs> I love Ivor. Oh, I Ivor's love awesome. Ivor. Okay, kill him. And that puts it at even odds, I think. Now they have it's, three guys left. Yeah, but he's about to... They're all pretty weak. Yeah, they're all very, very weak. Except actually. for one guy. I think he has 12 health. Uh, but he's got no armor. Oh, well. He's got 12 health and maybe 6 armor. Okay, yeah. 8, Eight armor. Hey, hey, okay, way. so this guy's still relatively strong, but Ivor's at full. Yeah, this guy's at full. This guy's at full. And this guy's might die. <laughs> Let's find out. You could do, uh... I could do three. You could do the bloody him. flail. I could do the bloody flail. Sure. Maybe I can pull off uh, another Hail Mary. No, no, not no luck. Oh. oh well, that's okay. Still far more useful than one damage within twenty percent chance of missing. <laughs> My God, I <laughs> he's a beast. <laughs> okay, here we go. Uh, I'm gonna go here, and I'm just gonna attack this guy, and we're gonna do five damage to you. Damn! Suck it. Okay, this guy moves forward. Deal two damage to you. And you can't do anything to Ivor. Awesome. I love it when a plan comes together. Uh, he's got exactly five. Nice. <laughs> got okay. no chance, buddy. No chance at all. You have no chance to survive. Make your time. <laughs> okay, well, I think this is the end of the episode either way. Yeah. Um, maybe, maybe it's okay to leave this one a little bit more broad, but uh, what do you think are some of the strengths and weaknesses of the battle interface uh, of the game. I, I know I've, I've asked a lot of questions about it, and it's not necessarily to point out flaws, but rather to, you know... Actually gauge the community reaction to it? Well, well to gauge kind of like, yeah. what is... What are they doing right and wrong, and kind of what do, what do you think they were going for? Yeah. So I, I'd like to hear from you guys to see what you think some of the, the good and bad things are with the battle UI. Yeah, that's a that's that's a that's a pretty good one. Um, I have heard the complaint that you know it's a little samey, it's a little boring, it's a little one-dimensional, but that isn't the. I think that misses the point of a lot of it. 
Um, you'll, you, you see me talking about, like, just blatantly ignoring 90% of the character abilities in this game, and yet I still really enjoy the combat. Yeah, um, yeah. I don't know. This is the second time I've been sent to find a Varl who's heading in my direction with humans in tow. <laughs> uh, sorry, yeah, we're, uh, we'll, we'll continue this one next time. <laughs> All right, thanks for watching, everybody. See you next time. <sighs>